Hi, in a prior video I showed you the planning for a two block reduction print. Now I'm going to walk you through how I'm making the two block reduction print. These are the color separation drawings that show you my plan for how I'm going to make this two block reduction. The blue block is going to be on its own and then the second block is going to have the yellow which is then going to be carved and reduced to my key block which is going to look like this. So to start, I took my fairly loose sketch here of what I was going to do for my yellow block. I put it over my key block drawing and I filled in and made sure that wherever I had yellow, I was covering up where it's going to be black later. Right? Makes sense because I want the material to be there for carving the black run later. And then had this, I also added that. I then took this and drew over it to get an image that I could then transfer to my block. I decided against doing a more um, sort of normal reduction where you would transfer this and then carve for the first run to get this. I decided I really was gonna approach the transferring of the drawings like you would a three block color print. So I transferred this. Notice as I always do that I put on here that this would be the print orientation. Therefore, this would be the block orientation. This is 3 8 Sheena, which I darkened with Sumi ink. So taped this on here, lining up with center marks I had drawn on here and transferred it using the red carbon paper and then I've started carving. So you can see as I'm starting to carve that I'm making other decisions that really weren't part of the original drawing. Like deciding I wanted this to be a white form against what would be a yellow or the lightest background, shifting this. But this is pretty much carved exactly as my, as my drawing indicated. So as soon as I finish carving this, I'd be ready to print my first run. thing I'm doing with these first run prints is that I'm not bothered that they're under inked in places. In fact, I like that. So um, an advantage to under inking a first run is that you're not oversaturating the paper and then subsequent layers will dry a little bit faster because they can absorb into the paper. I have some other proofs that some with one run, some with two runs, that I did of another block that was the same size as this one. So I thought I might use those as a uh, sort of extra first run. So I'm, I've inked up with very opaque ink in the hopes of covering up this a bit, but still having it inform my uh, two block reduction that I'm gonna do on top. So this is gonna have a lot of information and be very different from the other ones I'm printing, but um, 
I thought it would be fun, especially since I have a bunch of these proofs that I could print over. So I just lined them up with my key for my hole punches and punched holes in here so that I can use them for this project. Here's what my prints look like after the first run. They all have a very similar kind of yellows, grays in the blends. I started to add some very light red and pink, but they're definitely warm. And my plan is that the second run will probably be introducing other uh, cooler colors like blues or greens to the mix. So like any reduction, I have a lot of sheets of paper going, a lot of prints. And then these are a bunch of the prints that I made over other prints. So I added these to the mix. I'm really liking this one. And I varied on my prints, whether I was doing vertical blends, and I have some where I was doing horizontal blends, but not many. Most of this first run is printed with these vertical blends. I did have a little more trouble registering these because I was taking something, prints that were done with a totally different reg board and then shifting them over to use with the pin registration. So what I did is, is not only did I line them up with my key hole punch, but I also lined them up to prints that I had already made, kind of held them up into the light and lined up the two images as best I could and incorporated that into how I was doing the hole punches. So I have two or three that line up really perfectly with the registration, um, and but some of them don't, but that's okay. These are extra. Well, I still had the ink out and everything. I printed my first run onto a piece of tracing paper. And the reason I did this is that I could then go back to my drawings and my plans and lay this on top and just kind of see where I was going and see how that layering was gonna work. What I ended up with was this was a line drawing that I had taken for my second run, which was gonna be on my second block now and I could line up my adjusted drawing here, which includes the red on here. And I, again, I could layer this up, should have print to print here, and then hold it up to the light and just see how it was lining up and adjust and refine what my second run was gonna be. So this is now my second block, and this is how that got carved. Same kind of thing as I first printed that, I also pulled one on tracing paper. It's a good idea to put some sort of powder, like um, talc would be the obvious thing, baby powder, uh, magnesium uh, carbonate even, or even with these I used baking soda. Just something dusted on here, shake off the excess, and the um, powder will attach itself to the ink, oil-based ink we're using, and help it dry really quickly. So I now have two prints on tracing paper so I could by hand just line these up, hold it up to the light and see how my second block would now work with my first run. This is just another way to check that you're on the right track and that your carving is gonna work. This is now my second block. So I was looking to have the image overlap areas on here in a different way. In other words, working like a two block print or with color strategies like a two block print, not just a reduction. So there's areas on here that have whites where there's no whites here, which if this was a one block reduction, that wouldn't be possible. Here's one of the prints that I printed that now has two states, two runs on it. And here's my second block, and here's one of the prints. So you can see up here, especially it's pretty clear to see that there's areas overlapping in a way that's a two block print is how this is looking right now, rather than a reduction per se. In other words, right, you can't have a shared, in a reduction you'd have to have shared whites continuing and the colors layering in a way that's different from this. This is like a two block. So the first print I had pulled was this one when I was doing my second run. And my first thought was, oh no, 
oh no, this is a finished print. Like, I really love the balance of this. I really like how these two blocks are working together. And I thought, oh no, but I still need to do my key block. Like, I was just sort of in a panic here because coming back to my original key drawing, it looks like this. And that wouldn't go with that anymore. It just doesn't work. This has a different sort of small kind of fidgety sort of aesthetic and this changed into something sort of I don't know like mid-century modern-ish looking it has a very different sort of flavor so I thought okay I gotta throw this third run idea out the window um, like the calm mature printmaker that I am <laughs> I let myself stew on this for a little while and actually it's now been a few weeks because I've turned my attention to the other class and doing demos for that class but at first, I was like really in a panic thinking, oh no, do I, should I go back to my first run block and now make a second run out of this and have this be my third run? I just, it just made me rethink my whole plan here. After a few days, however, I realized, no, actually this isn't really a key block or a final run there's still details and stuff here that I that I had arranged you know arranged for planned for that isn't printing on this one and so it isn't looking totally finished in the way that I would want this print to be finished so just like I did between the first run and the second run I took my prints on tracing paper lined them up and instead of working from this or trying to change that into something new, I just took a whole new piece of tracing paper and laid it on top of here and drew myself a new key plate and what, did I, what I wanted that to look like. What was included in this is a lot more lining up of how the hand will layer and print on top of here because I want areas of my print and the players in the print not to just be defined by one run. I want, for instance, in the hand, there's gonna be all three printings of the two blocks are gonna establish different layering, different shadows, different you know details in the hand. The advantage of how I am doing this with making my prints as I went along and then readjusting my drawings that I'm transferring has meant a whole lot of flexibility in how I'm um, coming up with this print. And so this, even though after my panic there, this is actually turning out to be a really good working method with it. Here's how some of my second run prints look. Because I did the first run with vertical blends, the first thing I decided to do printing the second run, which is on my second block, um, I decided to do horizontal blends. And so this is how they look. Here's another one. But then I realized that, and I tried to do vertical blends for the second run, and that was more cohesive. Um, when I did horizontal blends like this over a um, top blend, they tended to get very complicated looking, which I liked, but I decided too that I also liked when it was a little more calm. Now this one's printed over a pattern block from a different project, so the, the registration isn't great, but I'm really liking how the colors are looking. Another thing I did is I decided to throw a small stamp into the mix. This wouldn't count as one of your runs, but it could be really fun. So I took this little speedy carve stamp and on this print, I printed it between the second and third runs, and I stamped it here, 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 very transparent. Might not show at all when I'm finished down here, but there might uh, show a little bit up here. Same with this one, I stamped it up here and again here, knowing that these were places where things weren't printing later and there was a good chance that they could show. But even if all they do is just give a hint of a different color in some place, I thought that would be worth doing. Here's another one I did, and the stamp shows a little bit more here. This one, I printed the stamps between runs one and two. Sometimes I printed after the second run, sometimes I printed in between. I finished my carving, and now I'm ready to print my third run. So as a quick re recap here, this is block one, and I printed the first run from this block. Then I went to block two, and I printed this run. 
Now I'm back to block one and I reduced it to this, carved it to this, and now I'm gonna print this. As usual with any relief block, but especially a last block in a print, I'm gonna pay a lot of attention to finishing up the carving and how it's gonna look. So um, on top of the other runs. So as I was carving this, I was looking at one of these and reminding myself of you know where things hit and all that, even though I had nailed down my drawing before I transferred it. Oh, and as I'm talking, I noticed there's a place right here that I forgot to carve away, so I need to do that before I can print. So checking that you've carved everything is a really good idea. Also, last runs, it's always about chatter control, right? So making sure that I cleared these areas deep enough that they're not gonna print there because I wanna see the other stuff that's going on on this print. I have, however, in here left some vertical hatching and that's what I'm gonna be looking for um, and seeing how that prints on the first print that I do. You have first run prints that you haven't printed the second run on. You could, of course, skip a run, you know? So if you're planning to do four, they could be on the paper one, three and four, or it could be one, two, three, or it could be one, two, and four. You know, you could, you just have to have three minimum. And if your image is complete with these different sorts of combinations of the runs, then try it, it's really fun. So that's why I've held back a couple of these prints that have just the, basically just the first run on them. So I can see how it looks. This is one of the best parts and one of the scariest parts of any project, right? You spent, I don't know, tens and tens of hours um, on this project so far. And now I'm ready to ink up my last block, my last run. And I've mixed up a mixture of black and the Carbazole Violet. Oh yeah, I just, I love that first pop you see when you ink something with dark ink. What I'm looking for, as I would with any time I'm inking up the block, is there something that I missed? I caught that. Um, are there, is there chatter somewhere that I missed? How are these horizontal hatching, or do you have, if you have tonal areas, how are they inking up? Do I need to stop right now and do more carving? Luckily, no, but you know, you might have to. Maybe pull a proof on newsprint, do a little cleanup carving, but this looks pretty good. So even though I said I don't usually um, proof on newsprint, it's not a bad idea, um, especially if you don't have a whole lot of prints and you really want to see what it's looking like. You could also print this last run on a piece, or your third run, whatever it may be, onto newsprint, or sorry, if this was your third of four runs, I would print it onto tracing paper, just like you did the other two runs, so you could layer it up and use it to help you figure out and accurately draw what would be your fourth run. So the benefit of printing on newsprint, of course, is that you're not using one of your good prints, but also that you could be sure that you're getting fully inked. And if anything, I'm actually over inked a little bit. I have some smearing. Um, good time to check, like I can see, there's a little bit of something like dried ink or something right here on the block. So I can get rid of that. It was a good thing that I did print on newsprint because I got that smearing. So I'm being a little bit more careful with my quantity of ink and how many passes that I'm doing. And as usual for any print session, I have sorted through my prints and put the ones that I don't love the most at the top. So those could be the ones that I print on first. Now I've carved so much away on my block that it is now almost lower than my uh, notch in my registration board. So I need to be careful that I'm not just, you know, doing this where, where it's not lining up in the same way. I'm 
some of the thinner washi that I'm printing on, the ink layers have become uh, pretty saturated into the paper. And so um, I'm getting more pull when I'm trying to do this. So uh, you might want to put a piece of tracing paper to help the Baron or the spoon glide a little bit better. I had to re-oil my Baron pad again, just so I have a little bit more, um, you know, sliding when I'm printing. When you get down to a final block or a key block, you have a lot less flats usually than an earlier run, and so you have to be really careful about smearing. I think I might also might be getting some smearing again, so you need to adjust and not have as much pressure then, as well as maybe not as much ink as you think. This is happy printer face. I'm really excited by this. I have to say too that um, through necessity we've had to print by hand this semester, but I'm really enjoying it and just remembering how much you can do with a spoon is, uh, is a good thing to remember. Here's a look at my finished prints. This was one of the ones I did first because I have some dents in my paper, but I can take care of that after this ink dries. I could spritz this with water and put it on a piece of plexi and it'll flatten right out. What I liked about this first one is that it showed me that I liked where everything was hitting and I liked the image. What I didn't like is that this is really insistent. It's like having this dark color over the whole last run just makes everything kind of frenetic in, in your face. So I decided I need needed some sort of blend. So I have some gold ink and I decided to do a blend with lighter colors here and then the darker color in the middle. I also lightened up that color. This is more of a brown, and this is uh, that black purple. Here's a couple more of the finished prints. On both of these, there is horizontal blends on the second run, and I really like how the gold ink is gonna work and be that shimmer and have a different sort of quality. Also on both of these, there is a brownish sort of red in the second run, which makes the gold, which is reads sort of as a brown, really integrate and work with those other colors. So I'm happy about that. For my students, I'm excited to see what your final prints will look like. For everybody, remember that a two block reduction has qualities of a one block reduction and a multi-block print. So it's taking advantage of the different ways that your runs can overlap will really make a good print. And also to my students, I just wanna say, take some risks, you guys. You're printing a lot of pieces of paper. Have fun with color, have fun with the value. Think about using metallics and just get started. Do that first run and then that's going to limit the decisions that come later. And I know you're gonna do a good job. Happy printing.